So, Mamadou Malcolm Jello, groundbreaking, historic, just two words used to describe, two of many words used to describe uh, your report. Um, do you see it as being groundbreaking? It is groundbreaking and historic because in the 70 years of history that this great institution have, has been in existence, we have never written a report and a resolution that specifically focuses on the plight of black people. Uh, so for that reason alone, it is groundbreaking that today we have adopted the first resolution and report focusing on people of African descent and the racism that we face on a daily basis and historically have been facing. And indeed a uh, UN special rapporteur as well, um, singing the praises, if you like, or at least backing the call for more action to be taken to tackle racism against black people in Europe, Afrophobia as we know it. Um, do you think enough people in Europe know about Afrophobia? Yes, I think, uh, I think most people know about Afrophobia. They might not know the, the term Afrophobia, but they actually know the realities of people of African descent. Um, if you should ask most white people if they would want to live in a black man's life um, for a day, most people would say no. And the reason is very simple, because we know that black people's living conditions are almost every time, every single time, very terrible compared to the rest of the population. Uh, the disparities are out there. We have data that shows very clearly that you know, and there are structural racism affecting people of African descent in all aspects of life. You look at education, if you look at the health sector, if you look at the outcome, if you look at, you know, the, the, the uh, um, prison system, um, if you look at the labor market, it's exactly the same thing. People of African descent are the, at the bottom of this hierarchy. And we continue to face these issues every single day as we speak. So it's time, time is overdue that we stand up and take a farm stand against this kind of racism that black people continue to face. So what we've done here today for me is extremely important. I, um, I get emotional because it's not only, even though I give examples of myself and the kind of racism that I face as a you know, black politician, I know my story is shared by so many millions, 15 million black people at least uh, in Europe. And this is for all of them. So that we would also understand that our plight will not be forgotten, it will be raised and talked about at the highest level of decision making. And that's exactly the point that we want to put across today. But most importantly, it's a call for action. It is not only, it's not supposed to be an eloquent document that we just say, oh, you know, we have a resolution. That's not enough. We already have a lot of uh, resolutions that talk about human rights. This very institution, the, the, it safeguards the very principles of human rights that we talk about every day, the European Convention on Human Rights. But even though we have those principles and those conventions, the, the realities of black people are quite um, terrible in every aspect of life. So that's why it's important to focus on specific kind of racism affecting black people, which is Afrophobia in this case, and not only um, approve of this document, adopt it, but also make sure that we implement every single resolution that is suggested in this document. That's the only way forward. This is just a start, but we have the real work ahead of us. Reliable data, adequate resources to collect that data, political participation, just a few of the measures that you are calling for. Data is um, absolutely vital. If you don't count us, we don't count. Most European countries today don't want to collect data based on race, disaggregated based on race. And if you don't collect data based on race, how are you able to be identify the disparities that this particular group is facing. You can't. Both the United Nations and the, the, the uh, European Union, the Commission, have said to member states that it is important to collect disaggregated data. But a lot of countries are using the excuse that, no, we cannot collect data based on race because when we do that, we are normalizing racism. But what it actually does is perpetuate racism. It perpetuates structural racism and institutionalizes it because you are not, you are unable to identify the disparities that particular groups, for example, people of African descent are facing if you don't collect data that is disaggregated by race. The UK is a very good example where they do this and it also shows very clearly the disparities uh, within every sector of society. 
That is what we need to do. So that's why we have a resolution, a recommendation that says that the member states must start collecting data based on race and ethnicity. Mamadou Malcolm Jalou, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me.